Hello my garden friends. It's Jersey Shore Lisa from myandjgarden.com and I wanted to give you a garden tour of the backyard. Uh, yesterday I filmed a tour of our front yard food forest and now I'll just take a spin around the backyard and tell you what's growing back here. It might be a little noisy right now because our air conditioners are going but um, We'll start over here by the gate. We have a small bed um, that just has a few cucumbers growing in it. And beside that, we have the kiwi arbor that I built from some scrap wood that I got from my brother-in-law who is a building contractor. And he had some leftover two by fours from one of the projects he was working on. I did have to buy those um, smaller slats across the top and I did buy those um, two posts holding the thing up. But everything else was um, free and I put it together and put it up last year. I had those kiwi vines. Um, they're Arctic Beauty Kiwi. There's one male and one female. I don't know which one is which. Uh, but they were in pots last year for one year. Um, and now I've put the, I put them in the ground last year. Uh, so they overwintered in the ground. Um, and they're coming back beautifully and starting to creep across the arbor. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, these are two half barrels, whiskey barrels. This one is planted with some herbs. Um, I just got these herbs from ShopRite in the produce section. Uh, they said they were grown organically. So uh, one is cilantro, one is rosemary, and I started some chamomile from seed and tucked that in the back there. Um, these are oka tubers, uh, and they are actually related to wood sorrel. So you can see that they kind of look like some weeds that are growing in the lawn but they they started out as tubers and they're from the Andes region of the world and um, they actually don't like super hot summers so we'll see how they do here but um, I will have to dig them up and store some tubers to replant next year over the winter because they will not be perennial in this zone which is 7a 6b um, there's over here behind this little, little fence. I know it's very cheesy looking, but, uh, I do this because we have a very rambunctious yellow lab, um, who would definitely root through gardens in our backyard if they were in the ground. Um, she also really enjoys picking blackberries off the blackberry bushes and eating them for breakfast. She comes out here uh, every morning and goes shopping in the blackberries. So um, I'm keeping her out of my blackberries this season. Uh, one of the blackberries was planted in the middle here and it got very wilty and I'm afraid it had some sort of uh, disease or fungus so I cut it down and it's actually starting to grow back but in the meantime I put in a uh, squash it looks like it's a patty pan the reason I say it looks like is because it came up as a volunteer um, in the keyhole garden and I didn't want it to take up too much real estate in the keyhole so I moved it over to the side yard here these are mashua tubers they are also from the Andes region of the world, and they are edible tubers, but the plant is actually in the nasturtium family. So um, in some areas of the world, this would be a perennial, and I wouldn't need to dig it up, but here, I probably will. Um, they were kind of fairly expensive, so I definitely will dig some up and save them for next year. Uh, but I'm hoping that they'll climb, they're vining, so I'm hoping that they'll climb along this bed frame throughout the season. This is my little pop-up greenhouse. We put it up not this winter, but the winter before, and it's done incredibly well. Um, no rips or tears, the zippers still work perfectly. Uh, so I'm very happy with that. And we did um, fix it to footings 
here you can see that they're wooden uh, basically railroad ties landscape ties and we cut them into 18 inch lengths or 16 inch lengths um, and sunk them into uh, into the ground and then bolted the frame to that so whereas I had a similar pop-up greenhouse at my other property and it would blow around the yard periodically even though I weighted it down with fairly heavy bricks um, this one hasn't moved an inch because we put it on those footings so that worked out really well um, over here is kind of like a little woodland area of the yard and I did put in a spice bush there so um, I'm interested in inviting some native wildlife including butterflies and pollinators um, as well as birds into the yard so I thought bringing a native spice bush into the yard would be a really nice addition um, that's a little makeshift fire pit because I had some extra cinder blocks um, that's some just native woodland uh, underbrush mostly um, native huckleberries and native blueberries um, and there's also some mountain laurel in there or sheep's kill I think it's called or lamb's kill um, this is a high bush cranberry uh, so I have one in the front and I put one back here as well because that blooms beautifully this is the first keyhole garden it's actually the most recent keyhole garden I just built this this year so it's it, it could be filled up higher than it is um, the contents are actually settling a great deal because the bottom layer has logs and a whole lot of leaves um, and then I topped it with compost and some soil so there are some weeds happening in there um, but I think that the plants are coming along beautifully in the back we have some cana lilies coming up I have potatoes planted here that were sprouting they're just organic potatoes from the grocery store uh, they started to sprout so I plunked them into the keyhole um, there is a zucchini and an eggplant a couple more zucchini and another eggplant um, I'm leaving quite a lot of space in here because I expect these plants to get fairly large and um, but I, I wouldn't hesitate to drop some greens or something in there. I just don't have the extra plants at the moment. So there's a little bit of elbow room in that garden. Um, this is mostly garlic. And there's one little bush bean there. I don't even know how that got there. Th these are some strawberry spinach plants that were in here last year. And they actually overwintered and now they're, they've fruited and um, I'm probably just going to spread that fruit around in this garden and let it reseed. Um, strawberry spinach does make really delicious looking fruit, but it's not that delicious to eat. It, ver it just very much tastes like spinach, actually. Um, those little flowers back there are rat-tailed radishes. Um, those plants are not doing so great in here. But there are a few radishes on there and it's flowering okay so I'm leaving it there um, there's a little bit of lettuce that reseeded I popped in some uh, Swiss chard it's very small but it's in there this is the second keyhole garden this one is just fantastic this gets the most Sun in the backyard for the most uh, part of the day the longest part of the day so you can see there's this nice happy nasturtium out front there are peppers throughout the garden that tomato I did not put there that's a volunteer from the compost basket I do throw a lot of food scraps from the kitchen into the center compost basket so volunteers come up in the keyhole all the time <laughs> um, there's another uh, pepper lots of peppers in here. There's Anaheim chilies and some um, bell peppers uh, There's also bush beans uh, I've tucked a little um, bird bath in the back there to keep the birds happy um, There's some eggplant here in the front and some reseeded lettuce that happened in the back 
there's lots of weeds. I let the clover be because the clover helps to add nitrogen to the soil. So um, it also acts as a living mulch, so it helps to retain moisture. I have to water it less than I would without the clover. So I let it do its thing and fill in my gaps for me. Um, in this garden this year, we have some daikon radishes. I have a tiny parsley here. There are four tomatoes in the back of the box. Um, there's an eggplant in the front corner. A nasturtium, if I didn't say it already. And we have some carrots doing their thing in between everything. I don't tend to plant in rows. So um, I did kind of section I did kind of do some sections in this box, but that's rarely what I tend to do. But when you're, when you're putting out seed, sometimes it's just more convenient to do them in blocks or groups rather than spread them all around the yard. Um, and then this is another back little woodland part of the garden. Lots of stuff wants to come up back here, including some sticker bush kind of stuff. It's actually called Greenbrier, and it's a native to this area. It does have edible shoots in the early spring, but they have thorns. You can see them kind of coming through the fence. And I'm not fond of pulling them out once they're pretty thorny. So I try to stay ahead of them. This is a pussy willow. That's brand new as of the fall. Um, I just put that in. And this is a sweet pepper bush, which is also a native and butterflies really love it. Uh, it's a nice native substitute for butterfly bush, which is kind of getting some bad press these days as far as um, a choice for landscaping in the northeastern United States because it can be invasive um, and it does take up space that could be used by um, a native that would support native ecology, um, which this does. Sweet pepper bush is a native and it flowers um, very much like the butterfly bush does. This is a dwarf mulberry and another dwarf mulberry is over here and I thought it was totally dead, but it's coming back. I'm so excited. Um, okay, so now we'll head over to the side yard. I'll do a quick pan of the back so you can see where I just was and how that all works together. Okay. And now, we're going over here into the side yard. This fence keeps the lab out of all of this interesting stuff that's back here. Um, I do have a compost tumbler. I don't use it. I can't stand it. Uh, I've tried to use it multiple times and I just can't get anything to break down in that compost tumbler. So um, I'll probably donate it to somebody who needs one because I don't. <laughs> um, on this side of the bed, this little side section, I've put in a few may apples and one of them is still peeking out from underneath the mulch. The others I've kind of covered up for now. They were um, they were out for a bit in the beginning of the season, but I just put them in, transplanted them. They really were not happy. I'm hoping that they come back strong next year. Um, this is my hold frame that I've left open since the beginning of the season. Um, I, I seeded things in here on purpose this year. Actually, in an earlier video, I put in seeds for um, persimmon trees that I had cold stratified over the winter in a refrigerator in my garage. I put in NJT, New Jersey tea seeds, and I put in um, Dead Man's Fingers uh, seeds as well. I think there are some persimmons coming up in here. I have a feeling that's one of the persimmon trees. Um, there are a few in here that I think are persimmon, but all the rest is reseeded from stuff I had in here last year. So there was bok choy and there's some black Simpson, black seeded Simpson lettuce 
and uh, arugula was in here too. So I'm just letting everything kind of do its thing and then I'll very carefully go through it all when it's time to clean out the bed and hopefully I won't cut down any of the trees that I want to save. Um, in this bed over here, this is kind of sunny right now, but it's in shade for most of the day. Um, there's a section here in the front that's covered with clover right now, but that's where ramps come up. Um, they're wild leeks, uh, and they are native to New Jersey, um, but they are, I think it's the word is ephemeral, so they come up in very early spring and then they die back completely. They are bulbs. Um, they are the first greens that you'll be able to harvest in the springtime, uh, but they are becoming rare uh, in the wild. So I'm glad that I was able to procure some bulbs and get them to take in this yard. This was the first spring that they came up and I was so excited that they're here to stay. So um, I'm very pleased that they have come up but they're gone by now it's it's june they've been gone for a couple of weeks this is a bleeding heart and that is done blooming and we're left with seed pods that are beginning to open up so i'm going to collect some of those seeds and save them um and try and germinate some so that i can give them away to friends next year because this was a beautiful plant and it bloomed for a really long time this is a hazelnut. It's also known as a filbert. Um, it's a multi-stemmed shrub or small tree and it has catkins instead of flowers so it's wind pollinated. I actually have a couple more. There's another one there and that dead stick is another one but if you kind of scrape the bark it's not really dead but it was in a pot and it wasn't doing well so I moved it into this bed and it has died back and we'll see if it comes back next year I'm not sure if it will but maybe it will um, I would not usually plant trees this close together except for the fact that it's a wind pollinated thing so um, they really need to be fairly close as far as I'm concerned we'll see how it goes it's just starting this one is just starting to grab on and and put on a lot of growth so I'm happy to see that um, this is my compost system it has a roof so that I can kind of control the moisture content in the compost without having to tarp it uh, in very windy, rainy conditions, it's going to get wet, but it's not going to get completely soaked and leach out all of the lovely nutrients that I'd like to maintain. I also put the roof on so that I could put a gutter on, and so then I can route that gutter into my two rain barrels here. Um, I collect the rain barrels to water the gardens. Uh, I am very interested in maintaining the soil life in my gardens, so I want to water with city water as infrequently as possible because city water is treated and it has chlorine in it and chlorine kills um, bacteria. So I would like to have bacteria and fungi in my soil and so I like to use rainwater whenever possible um, to water my plants. So this garden bed is actually filled with some interesting plants that are starting to catch on and that I shouldn't have to replant. Um, this one in the back here is called American Spikenard. That is um, an understory woodland native shrub. Uh, it will flower and it will fruit and it has edible fruit and uh, there are medicinal qualities to it but I am not uh, really well versed in exactly what those medicinal qualities are but I was excited when I got this seedling from my friends over at Morning Sun Homestead in New Egypt, New Jersey. Um, I attended their plant exchange and they put one of these aside for me and so I've put it in the ground and it likes it where it is. So I'm looking forward to trying that fruit. That is a perennial and will come back every year. These are sea kale. Sea kale is a perennial. It's actually not a brassica, but it is closely related in some way. I'm not sure, but uh, it is called sea kale. And I am 
looking forward to it being a perennial and coming back every year. I have no idea what the flowers look like. So this is the first time I've grown it and it's starting to catch on and I hope it actually overwinters well. Um, this is called Lovage. Lovage is, um, I planted it last year. It did come back. It's very slow growing right here. Um, but Lovage is supposed to get humongous. It's supposed to get like five, six feet tall and be an interesting um, alternative to celery. So I'm waiting on that really developing, but it did come back. So I'm pleased with that. It doesn't look like it's struggling. It's just fairly small, that's all. Um, this is called Salad Burnett. Salad Burnett is a perennial. Um, I had a Salad Burnett over here last year, but it did not come back. So these are new. Um, I have I have one here too. That's not doing quite as well. But these are new this year, and we'll see if they can grab on and come back again. These taller things over here are fava beans. I just tucked them in there because I had the seeds, and they are good nitrogen fixers. Um, we have some raspberries that are escaping the side yard, the in front of the gate. There, the patch is actually in front of the. The fence and it's coming through underneath if anyone if any of you grow raspberries you know how that works they just spread and spread and spread and spread this is the first time I've grown American groundnut American groundnut is in the legume family it is it has an edible tuber and um, I planted it last fall and it took a really long time to come up, but it has come up. Um, and so I'm hoping that it will travel up and around and through this fence. But it's very slow. <laughs> it's a nitrogen fixer. Um, and it will have really pretty burgundy flowers. So I'm looking forward to that. I don't know if it's going to flower this year or maybe it will next year. These are some raspberries and we're leading up to a fig. This is a fig tree, and I wrapped it last year, but it still died almost all the way back down to the ground, but it regrows quite happily. Uh, I have no figs on it yet, and I put it in the ground in 2015, so I've been waiting a long time for figs. I hope it figs soon. Um, this is some escarole and some cilantro that has the cilantro seeds I seeded this year but the escarole I was just weeding a bed last year and I threw some of uh, the chop and drop down into this bed and it reseeded itself. <laughs> um, this is anise, anise hyssop which um, I believe is in the mint family so it's really supposed to spread like crazy but um, but I'm looking forward to the flowers. And that is mountain mint, which is a native. Uh, there are strawberries throughout the bottom of this bed. This is horseradish, which is obviously an edible root. Um, this is a medlar tree. It's brand new. I just put it in last year and um, it flowered this year. I don't know if that's actually going to become a fruit or not, but I'm leaving it alone and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Um, this is an aster, which is also native. And so that's what that bed looks like. Um, on this side, which is up against the south wall of the house, I have an asparagus bed. And I just put up this um, silly little fence around it quite recently because all of the asparagus were very heavy and falling forward into the way of the gate. So I put up this little fence. I cut some of the tallest stalks back about halfway um, just so that it can continue to photosynthesize and put all that in energy down into the roots so that it comes back again next year. Uh, this is a pineapple sage, and that will probably triple in size by the fall when it flowers with beautiful red little flowers that hummingbirds just adore. Um, this is oregano, and that is just taking over the world. It loves it there. 
There's are some irises. And this is a dwarf pomegranate. Um, and it may or may not survive here, but because I think that I'm kind of pushing the zone for that plant, I've put it up against the south wall of the house. I may wrap it the same in the same fashion that I wrap the fig trees for the winter, and we'll see if it makes it. It did flower. There are two little flowers on it, so it's supposed to be um, self-pollinating. So. We'll see if we get a couple of pomegranates on there this year. That'll be cool. Okay, and then um, there's this bed. This bed, I let reseed every year. Um, all these fringy um, topped plants, that is French sorrel, uh, and that's gone to seed. And this is escarole, and that has bolted. And these tops will all bloom with beautiful little purple flowers that look like asters. And I just love them. And I love escarole too. It's a delicious thing to cut up and put into omelets in the morning. It's a wonderful green. Um, bugs don't bother it at all. And um, it's a little uh, tougher. It's, it's a little more sturdy than lettuce. So... Um, it's not as sturdy as Swiss chard, but it's uh, kind of in between chard and lettuce, and I, I like the texture a lot. Um, I also have beets growing throughout here. I haven't pulled one beet yet. I never have luck with beets or radishes in that they never ball up for me underground, but I love beet greens, so I plant them all the time, and I just eat the greens. <laughs> um, these are a couple of pepper plants here, and these are cardoons, which are related to, um, they're related to the artichoke. They're in the artichoke family, but you actually eat the stalks. You can, um, once they're bigger than this, you can peel the stalks and cook them and, and eat them, and they have kind of an artichokey flavor to them. Um, there's also garlic in this bed and some chamomile that I planted. Those tomatoes are reseeded from last year, some chocolate cherry tomatoes, and you can see some cucumbers vining along this little wire fence that I have in here. So um, this is a really long video. There's more to show you, but um, I'll show you more next time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I rarely visit this side of the yard um, with my viewers on YouTube, but I thought that I should let you in on what else is growing um, at myNJgarden.com. So there are some raspberries. Uh, I hope you get the chance to grow some food in your yard, and I hope you enjoy your garden as much as I enjoy mine. Uh, please comment and like the video and subscribe to the channel and let me know what you think. All right, have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.